is uh, uh, Chaudhary Sensei. Uh, I am Sanada. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, the WD3 for seismic or strengthening. But, uh, uh, and uh, we are working with uh, Professor Amin uh, from uh, Bangladesh, Buet. Uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, contributing the seismic variation uh, activities uh, in wa working uh, group two. And uh, today uh, we are uh, talking about the beam crown joint issue. Uh, however, uh, Today's presentation will be held by uh, Mr. Mursharin. Uh, he is from uh, Bangladesh and my student. So uh, uh, let me introduce uh, Mr. Mursharin. So please uh, start your presentation. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? So today I will be discussing about chapter five, which is uh, concerning the reinforced concrete beam column joint. Uh, basically, recent earthquake in developing country showed severe damages to exterior beam column joint when the substandard detailing such as straight anchorage or deficient anchorage was used. This uh, picture shows a uh, devastated uh, uh, building from 2005 back in Kashmir, uh, where straight anchorages were used for exterior joint. And this is a typical condition for Bangladeshi existing uh, construction site where uh, in the exterior beam column joint, we can see uh, uh, irregular development length. Again, so the, pro the case for Bangladesh is before 1995, rounded burr or plain burr were used in construction. Uh, however, since 1995, uh, deformed bar was introduced in the construction market. And since then, it has been slowly governing over the plain bar. When plane bird were used in the beam column joint anchorage, 180 degree anchoring was hook anchoring was used. Whereas uh, when a deformed bar was introduced in the market, some of the cases, uh, uh, 180 degree bar, uh, hook was not required. 90 degree hook is uh, more than enough to provide uh, the anchorage. However, uh, in some cases, uh, those uh, 90 degree hooks were kept as straight anchorage and that leads to some problems such as pull out failure. Starting from 2006, uh, Bangladeshi government started to enforce the BNBC, which actually tried to get rid of this problem. But in between this period, 1995 to 2006, some buildings were created where uh, exterior beam column joint had straight anchorage. So that faces some issue with pull out failure. So in order to understand its characteristic properly, we devised two tests back in 2017. And the specimen in the left shows uh, deformed bar conditions, which is basically simulating the uh, situation from 1995 onwards. And the specimen on the right is showing a uh, plain bar, which is simulating a uh, situation up to 1995 and beyond where plain bars are used. These are actually, uh, these are, model from actual buildings back in Bangladesh. Uh, and there's a, uh, and here 70% scaling factor was used. In the bomber, we considered straight anchorage up until the end of the column. And for plain bar, we considered 180 degree hooking as typical conditions. So the specimen was loaded in this kind of experimental setup where uh, vertical jacks were used to provide a conscient axial load and lateral jack was used to provide a cyclic lateral loading. Uh, specimen was loaded up to 4% drift ratio in both positive and negative loading direction. And these are the test results. For specimen J1, which had plain, uh, deformed burr, but also straight anchorage in positive loading direction, which is from left to right loading direction, we see joint shear failure as can be seen here as well in the positive loading direction, joint shear cracks. However, in the negative loading direction, after attaining 2% strength, sudden loss in load carrying capacity was observed. And if you look at this final specimen crack picture, we can see that beam is completely severed off from the joint. And uh, there is no connection between uh, beam and the column joint in the negative loading direction, which is from right to left. So pull out happened on this case completely. So in this one, uh, in this uh, experiment, we figured out that drift ratio was up until 2.0, which translates to a 
ductility limit of 2.2. I will explain this later, how we got this value. And on the other specimen, on specimen J2, here we can see that in the positive loading direction, we have joint shear failure and the negative loading direction, we also had joint shear failure. Also observing at the specimen crack diagram, we can see joint shear failures in both loading directions. It is okay because uh, during construction, we do consider joint uh, shear capacity and also uh, flexural capacity of column and flexural capacity of beam. So this part is actually considered during uh, our designing. However, pullout failure is not considered during our designing. So that is a more critical condition and we need to avoid that. Also, a slight note is that uh, even though the specimen failed in uh, joint shear failure, the deformation capacity was beyond 4%, which translated to a ductility limit of over 2.2, sorry, 3.2. So, when should we consider the possibility of pullout failure? To do this, we figured out, we came out with this uh, flowchart where first criteria is, was the construction period of the building between 1995 to 2006? If no, then we don't need to consider. If yes, then we go to the next step, which is where deformed bar used in the construction of the beam column joint or the building. If no, then we don't need to consider. If yes, then we go to the next criteria, which is the assumed F limit, which is the deformation limit of this uh, structure that we will calculate. Is it higher than the F limit of 2.2, which is uh, determined based on the previous uh, test we did on this under this satrap uh, project? If no, then we don't need to consider the pullout criteria and we can follow the typical CNCRP conditions. If yes, then we also need to consider the pullout criteria for the column shear resistance capacity. In that case, along with flexural capacity and shear capacity, we will also consider pullout capacity. And finally, we can evaluate the seismic evaluation of the building. So this is the formula with which we can determine the flexural strength. Uh, previously, uh, Rafikul san and also Matsuko san uh, discussed about this equation. So I will not uh, discuss about this in length. And this is also uh, the uh, equation to determine the ultimate shear strength. So on this chapter, we are focusing on the pullout failure of the beam column joint with uh, inadequate anchorage. So to determine that, we will use this formula where MBA is the moment uh, flexural, uh, flex MBA is actually the flexural strength of the beam at beam column joint pullout. This is basically uh, the summation of uh, beam flexural and column flexor. When this moment, uh, when this flexural strength reduces, the column shear resistant QC, which is the lateral load carrying capacity of the column also reduces. So we need to determine this critical value to determine the column shear resistance at pullout. Also in this formula, LB is actually the span length of the beam. LC is the length of the column, which is basically equal to story height and DC is the depth of the column. So to determine uh, flexural strength at pullout, we use this formula where TBA is actually uh, the reverse strength at pullout and D is the effective depth of the beam. This is basically modified from the bling flexural equation. Uh, TBA is actually the force that is uh, acting on the uh, reverse during pullout and we can calculate it with this formula where LBA is actually the anchorage length. If this is unknown, then we can consider this as two thirds the depth of the column. This value was determined based on discussion with expert engineers from Bangladesh. And T, tau AB is actually uh, the peak bond strength. This is based on AIJ's design guideline formula. Since this is a design guideline formula, this provides a conservative estimation. And this was later uh, verified with analytical uh, analysis where specimen J1, the specimen with the straight anchorage was modeled using this uh, equation and its characteristic was noted and it showed both conservative uh, estimations in positive and negative loading directions while simulating pullout failures. In this equation, uh, sigma zero is actually the axial stress on the joint and sigma B is the compressive strength of column concrete. Strength index can be determined using this formula where we are considering uh, the pullout failure, uh, pu joint pullout force as well uh, in accordance to flexural strength and also shear strength. And ductility index is found by this formula as uh, 
explained by Rafikul Sun earlier, so I will not be discussing about this in length. And these are the equations to determine the basic seismic index E0. Uh, we can find the ductility dominant one and also the strength dominant one. Again, these are exactly the same as C and CRP, so I will not be discussing this in length. So let me show you an example to explain how to use this chapter to determine the pull-out criteria. So let us consider a frame of a six-story existing building. Uh, for the sake of time, we will just consider it on the fourth floor of this frame. On this one, we have three kinds of primary load-bearing member. Uh, in the vertical direction, which is column A, column B, and column C. Although we have a beam, but beam is considered as the secondary member. So we will not be considering this for uh, lateral load carrying capacity of the building. So details of column A and B are such as like this. Details of column C is such as like this. And the details of beam is this. 10 MPA concrete was used for this building and 275 MPA river was used. So this is the workflow where we begin by uh, evaluating the ultimate strength QU, which is based on the minimum of QMU or QAC, which is the flexible strength and uh, shear strength. Uh, then we determine the C index and F index. And finally, we determine the basic seismic index E0. This part is in accordance with uh, C and CRP. After de uh, determining E0, we determine if the deformation limit of the building is larger than the F limit, which is uh, established as 2.2 under this project. If the limit is within 2.2, then we don't need to do anything. We can finish the evaluation there, that's it. But if the limit is beyond 2.2, then we need to consider for the pullout failure in exterior joints. In that case, if that floor or if that structure had any exterior joints, we also need to consider the joint pullout criteria QBA and minimum of them should be taken as ultimate strength. And using that ultimate strength, strength index C and ductility index F needs to be calculated. And using that uh, strength index and ductility index, we can finally get the basic seismic index of the structure. So on this one, we had, uh, I showed you three columns, column A, column B, and column C. For column A, B, and C, flexural strength was uh, evaluated as 166, 165, and 99. Similarly, uh, shear, ultimate shear strength was uh, evaluated as 203, 221, and 143. These are just using the basic equations shown earlier. So inputting the values there will give you these results. So to determine the QU, which is the ultimate strength of the column, we take the minimum of the each, and this is the QU. From here, we can determine, uh, this part is exactly the same as C and CFP. From here, we can determine the C and F index of the structure. So for column, from the previous slide, we get the QU. Summation of W is basically the weight of uh, weight sustained by the story, which is basically the summation of axial loads on each of the columns. So dividing this by this, we can get the C index and also having uh, using the formula shown earlier, we can determine the F index as well, which gave us the performance of column A as such, column B as such, and column C as such. This is also in accordance with C and CRP. So combining the memorable performance of column A, column B, and column C, we can get the overall uh, structural performance. Overall performance of the fourth floor, basically, not the structure, because we are just considering for the fourth floor, we need to consider this for each floor to get the overall performance of the building. And this is the performance of the building where we get three peaks, peak one, peak two, and peak three, for which we will uh, evaluate the seismic index value. For peak one, Using the C and F value, we can determine the E0 value as 0 0.157. For peak two, we can determine the E0 value as 0 0.244. And for the peak three, we can determine this as 0 0.124. As you know, E0 value is the largest of the one. So in this case, uh, the governing E0 value is 0 0.244, which is actually at uh, 2.32 ductility limit index, which is beyond the F limit of 2.2. So we are assuming that if we cannot determine uh, if there is any uh, straight anchorage or if there is any lack of anchorage, we are determining that at 2.2, structure may fail by uh, pullout failure. So we will limit the structural deformation capacity up until 2.2. Since this is uh, 
estimating the capacity beyond this limit, we have to consider for a joint pull-up criteria. So along with uh, getting the QMU and QSA, which is uh, flexible strength and shear strength, we also need to consider the QBA, which is the pull-out strength, joint pull-out strength. Since column A and column B are interior joints, interior uh, columns with interior joints, we don't need to consider this because interior joint will have a, a throw rebar, beam rebar. It will not show any pullout. So we only considered QC, uh, QBA value for column C, which was the only exterior column for our example. So ultimate strength is basically minimum of each of them. So this is modified like this. Going to the CNF index here, some things will be changed since the capacity was changed to six uh, for column C was changed to 25.2 from 99.2. It's C index value also changes. It's basically this divided by this value and ductility index F, this can change or this can remain the same. For this case, this particular case, it was same. But since beyond 2.2%, the structure is supposed to fail by uh, pullout failure, we will limit the ductility limit up until 2.2 and we will not consider any limit beyond 2.2 because so we are assuming from 2.2, it's gonna fail. So the uh, behavior of column one is modified as such where dotted line is the previous performance and uh, solid line is the current performance. Column B as such, which is unchanged, and column C as such, where pullout criteria was considered. Without considering the uh, pullout, this is the performance of column C. And with considering the pullout, this is the performance of column C. Combining all three of them together, we can get this performance. This, uh, this is the overall performance considering the pullout. And uh, we have two peaks on this one, peak one and peak two. At peak one, after evaluating E0, we got it as 0.132 and peak two after evaluating the E0, we got it as 0.166. And the highest of uh, highest value of the E6 is the governing value for basic seismic index. So for this case, it is 0.166. So using this guideline value, uh, using this guideline, uh, the basic seismic uh, index of the building was reduced from 0.244 to 0.166 after considering uh, the pullout failure criteria. This is the performance comparison. Performance on the left shows the performance of the building before uh, considering for pull-out failure and performance on the right shows of uh, the performance of the building after considering the pull-out. That's all for me, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mursain Ahmed, as well as Professor Sanada.